This edition of iItaly New York is brought to you by L'energia non si ferma mai L'energia crea si trasforma diventa un'idea per generare nuova energia Diamo all'energia un'energia nuova and De Checo Pasta. Imported in the U.S. since 1893. In the next week episode, writer and food historian Francine Sagan takes us around the latest edition of the New York Summer Fancy Food Show. A special tour dedicated to the discovery of the very best of the Italian and Italian-American food experience. Let's enjoy this tour! We're at the Fancy Food Show, North America's largest food event, where there are more than 180,000 products from 2,400 exhibitors from 80 different countries. But I'm in search of Made in Italy. It is, after America, the largest group of exhibitors. So I've got my sneakers on, and I'm going to go run and find the best of Made in Italy. Come. Garofalo pasta from the Naples area of Italy. Explain to us why it's so good. Behind it, it's 200 of history making pasta. Um, workers uh, in production that come from uh, generations of uh, pasta makers, so know exactly what they're doing when they're working. And um, a family-run company that actually is in the pasta business since uh, two generations. That's pretty much the key of our success. 52% of Garofalo was purchased by a Spanish company. Is Garofalo pasta going to become Spanish now? Garofalo is staying in Italy. There's no planning change in production, but just uh, a little push, uh, and meaning that we're going to be able to achieve more and more and uh, hopefully bring uh, good Italian pasta from Gragnano in many other places. <music> I don't like gluten-free pasta, except when I went to Garofalo and I tasted Garofalo's gluten-free. Tell us how and why it's so delicious. What makes it special is probably not only the effort that there's been behind it, but actually the fact that we uh, bronze dye our gluten-free product as well, giving it that porous, uh, coarse texture that makes uh, sauce stick to it, just like our regular gluten pasta. This is a liqueur that is made with the mozzarella di bofola milk. Creamy, tell me what you think of this aroma. Oh boy, it's delicious. And you told me this from Salerno, from Naples. Where it makes great mozzarella di bofola. I don't drink very much, but I think I can, I can get drunk with this. Try it. Creamy, like a good mozzarella. It's amazing. And then, Gianna, look what else I discovered. You have to taste this 
It's a melon liqueur, but where you really taste the melon. This one I will try. Oh, this is great. A little piece of Salento sunshine in your glass. Buonissimo, this is delicious. After tasting so many delicious products, you want a nice refreshing glass of water. And we're here at one of Italy's most popular waters, Fuji. Fuji is a, is a mineral water, but also is a town and a touristic system because the town has the thermal spa where people used, used to come since uh, the Roman time. The Romans used to take the, the water for the town, for the ancient town of Rome, because it's very diuretic and it's well known since uh, uh, the Middle Age for its benefit. Uh, it, it was, it, popes and uh, famous uh, Italian artists used to drink Fuji in Rome, bringing it down through the system that they had at the time. Since that time, Fuji has been known for these uh, features. It, it helps uh, in the kidney, kidney disease and it helps uh, in purifying the body. We only bottle in a glass, it's distributed in Italy everywhere and uh, abroad uh, in all the countries where Italian communities are. And now we are trying to develop uh, the, the brand uh, beyond the, 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 the borders of the Italian uh, people. I was shocked when I learned that these fabulous crisp cookies come from Italy. Where are they from? Well, the Altuarice region is uh, the northernmost region in Italy. We are close to the border to Austria and Switzerland, in the middle of the Dolomites, in the middle of the mountains, and that's where the cookies are coming from. What's so special about these cookies is about uh, the clean air and the clean water of the Dolomites, UNESCO World Natural Heritage, and of course um, the selected Italian hazelnuts roasted in-house, the vanilla pots imported from the Bourbon Islands, our own coffee blend, and many, many very selected ingredients made out of a very traditional secret family recipes that exists uh, since 1925. What we are trying to do is, uh, in Italy we are already part of every household and now we try to be part of every household also in the United States and we are quite successful on doing this. Something that caught my eye as a New Yorker, there is kosher certified truffles. Siamo gli unici ad averlo sul pater nero e il pater bianco in quanto tutti gli altri competitors sono certificati soltanto su olio, sale e miele soltanto perché essendo un mono ingrediente è molto più facile la certificazione kosher rispetto a un prodotto del genere dove se vedi in etichetta non è un ingrediente ma sono almeno 10 ingredienti quindi la, eh, la certificazione è molto più logicamente lunga, costosa, molto più complicata at the fancy food show, we can't talk about Italy without mentioning Italian coffee. It's been in business for 50 years. It started from a small coffee shop in Naples and then it developed into a national product. It's, uh, now it's the second largest product in Italy. And, um, and we're restarting, we have refreshed all our product line, we're restarting our distribution in the United States. I wanted to order an espresso, and I heard somebody next to me say, I want it with the three C's. What did they mean? In Naples, actually, the tradition calls for a, a very hot cup. So the, the cup is to be hot, and the coffee is to be hot, and you need to drink it right away, hence the word espresso. The secret is really in the blends that we have done over the years plants that have uh, from 100% Arabica to different blends of Arabica and Robusta. We, need, we believe in the blends with a little bit of Robusta which gives the body to the espresso. Uh, and, uh, the Neapolitan tradition calls for a very dark roast, but we also have developed some blends with medium and light roast so that uh, we can make everybody happy. If you want to make it like the Italians do, you have to buy yourself a mocha pot, which is what you make it in Italy. You, you put the coffee inside, put it real tight, you tighten up and you put it on the stove and then the coffee is going to come out, it's going to smell the whole house and you drink the authentic espresso like it's made in every, every house in Italy today.
who invented Toronto in Italy in 1836, so it's more old than our when Italian was formed in 1875, so we're pretty proud of that. Toronto is a very natural uh, dessert. It's made of white egg, it's made of honey, it's made of sugar, and it's made of dried fruit. Well, we eat this especially in Christmas time, but also, let's say, from all the season coming from September up to the when we get the bad, good weather again. We make a lot of different kind of terone. It's soft terone, it's hard terone with nougat, with hazelnut. Uh, it's done with um, uh, almonds. It can be covered with chocolate. It can be chocolate made with, with fruit inside. So it's any di very different type of terone. As not only nougat and nougat chunks are used so before, but we also produce a lot of candies and we are one of the Italian leaders in the candies, especially for adult people. So we have a huge variety and we are covering all technologies from the gelée, which I am uh, now having in my hands, uh, to anise, which is a kind of exotic flavor, to licorice. So we really cover all the tastes of uh, Italian people. I'm with Rosanna. She came all the way from Italy to work here at Fancy Food Show. Cosa hai fatto qui durante questi giorni? Sono qui ospite di Italian Product, è un'importatrice di prodotti di eccellenza italiane, una di queste ce l'ho in mano e ho promosso con, con tutto l'amore che metto io nelle mie ricette e alle, alle persone che sono arrivate qui al, al Fancy Food. Questo è un piatto tipico, semplice, però con i colori dell'Italia. Un pane con una salsa di pomodoro e del basilico fresco. I'm at the Fancy Food Show at the Urbani Truffles booth. Urbani Truffles are the largest makers of all sorts of truffle products. They're from Umbria. So tell us a little bit of what we've got in front of us, these gorgeous, gigantic truffles. This is in honor of the Fancy Food Show. And what are some ways that you would recommend that people use it? Oh, I love on the eggs and on risotto. We are doing so many products and now we have a, a truffle ketchup that is really very popular in the United States and also all over the world. Uh, truffle ketchup for french fries or for your meat and it is a part of a real truffle products line that is uh, perfect on uh, meat or fish and uh, there is curry, truffle curry, truffle chili. Uh, truffle mustard, uh, truffle barbecue sauce, uh, there is a really a very rich uh, choice. And uh, also a, a ready sauce for pasta, that is uh, uh, artichokes and black truffles, or uh, white truffles and porcini mushrooms, or pesto and truffles. So there's the line of fabulous truffle thrills, ketchups and mustards and mayonnaise, sauces for pasta, and we can't forget the wonderful truffle olive oil. Yeah. The olive oil is very popular in the United States, and I think that the Urbani truffle olive oil is one of the best quality in the world. My mouth is watering because I'm sitting here in front of this pile of fabulous Urbani Black truffles, it is so aromatic. Wonderful, wonderful products. Thank you so much, Olga, and congratulations on such Thank a wonderful line. Thank you. I'm here at the Bocci booth at the Fancy Food Show holding bacio, which means kisses in Italian. It is Italy's most famous candy. In a batch is a wonderful feeling of gianduja chocolate and a lot of grinded hazelnut, a wool hazelnut on top, and the secret is the cover. The cover is dark chocolate, our own recipe, Luisa. So now you'll show us how they make these wonderful bacci. Dips it in that delicious chocolate. Gorgeous. And inside, there's this little piece of paper. What is the story with this? It's wonderful. It's a love story. A lady invented this to show her feeling to a man. So every bacio inside has, a, in the wrap, a love note, even now. And now I see that you have some olive oil and chocolate. We 
made uh, this chocolate sauce called ganache instead of the cream because we're Italian so we carry on the traditional olive oil. We made this with olive oil and uh, chocolate and this is to serve the bacio like that. This is an idea to serve the bacio. So you made a mixture of olive oil and chocolate as a way to melt the chocolate. This particular um, is so creamy, this mixture. What kind of olive oil did you use for this mixture? Plain olive oil, then you can switch to uh, extra virgin, then to a selection according to the amount of taste you want to have of olive oil inside your ganache. So that's a wonderful tip, I think, that as an easy way to melt chocolate, to so take good imported Italian chocolate, like Perugina's, put a little bit of wonderful olive oil, like Colavita, mix them together and you get a really creamy, simple sauce that can go over ice cream, dip cookies, anything. This is called stracchino in Italy. Here they're calling it crescenza. It tastes just like Italy. This is amazing. We're gonna to have to hear how you create this wonderful cheese. You know, we make many Italian cheeses in the United States. We make uh, you know, Parmesan, Provolone, and a few years ago, I was in Italy and I tasted crescenza. And so I said that it uh, would be a nice cheese to introduce to the American public. And so we went to Italy with the cheesemaker, and the cheesemaker saw a factory where they were making this cheese, and we brought the recipe to the United States. And we are the only ones in the United States to make this cheese. So this is a marriage between the know-how of Italy on how to make cheese with the technology and American wonderful Wisconsin milk a fabulous combination of the best of Italy and the best of America. This burrata, which is not easy to get in America that tastes like this, like authentic Italian. Burrata is just now becoming very popular in the United States. Until a few years ago, it was totally unknown to the American public. Now it's really catching on. Every restaurant has a recipe with burrata, and we are really, our sales are really grow, going up. For everybody who doesn't know what burrata is, we'll have the expert explain, what's burrata? Burrata is a mozzarella that is filled with cream and shreds of mozzarella. So uh, it's a very rich tasting mozzarella because it's very rich of butter fat. So it's very tasty, very, very tasty. This is like the king of mozzarella. I say it's mozzarella on steroids. <laughs> I like that. This is delicious. I'm at the Fancy Food Show with one of the judges for the Sophie Awards, Ken Blanchett of Fresh Direct. How are you, Francine? Great. Tell me about your love of Italian products. Half of my family is Italian, uh, Southern Italian. So I grew up in Brooklyn uh, with my Italian grandmother and my grandparents and spending weekends with them. So that was in the trenches. But what I love and I've learned to love over the years is the simplicity of Italian food. So you're looking at pasta, it's two ingredients. The simplicity is an issue. Olive oil, it's one ingredient. So you must have uh, the freshest products. And so you particularly love Italian olive oil, Italian pasta when you buy for Fresh Direct? Uh, yes, well that's what our customers want and that's what I love, so that's a good thing, right? The Italians have done a great job of uh, promoting brands and promoting Italian as a brand. What else do you like about Italian food? Well, listen, all the base product, cheeses, the king of cheeses is Parmigiano. What is that? It's two ingredients, so you have great milk and you have culture. That's it. And what sells best in New York, number one cheese? Parmigiano, of course, and at, at uh, Fresh Direct, it's tons of it, tons of it a month. So I love products that are uh, for Parmigiano, things that are both table and grating. So I love a fat cheese. I like something that's floral. I like something that really speaks uh, to the customer, not just uh, a grating cheese. This is more than grating cheese. This is a great cheese. Uh, I love to find the great wine, and I have friends in the wine business, and both in uh, Chianti and uh, all around uh, uh, Italy. So uh, Fresh Direct has been delivering wine for many years through partners. We've just uh, developed our, uh, our own store, have our own uh, brand and, and license, 
So we will be uh, expanding all of our selections, including Italian, for uh, the Fresh Direct customer in the next uh, months. I'm honored to be here with the number one American oil from Italy. Uh, we're with Giovanni Colavita. Thank you. Francis is always very nice with us. Yeah, we are number one for the Italian, 100% Italian extra virgin olive oil. Our company comes from Molise. It's a little region in the center of Italy, from a little village called Sant'Elia Pianisi. 1,700 people living there. It's a beautiful place. But from there, um, my father and my uncle have decided to, to start exploring other countries. And the first uh, country where we, we started was here. And then with an handshake, the business started in 1978. I'm here at the Colavita booth at the Fancy Food Show, speaking with John Profacci, the creator of Colavita's fine line of olive oils and other wonderful things. John, you have to tell us about this fabulous marriage between Italy and America. Well, it all, it all happened very casually in 1979. Uh, Enrico Colavita came to this country on his honeymoon and uh, he asked uh, his cousins that lived in Coney Island if they knew anybody that knew anything about olive oil. And the people that he asked, they knew me, we belonged to the same country club. And we set up a meeting and uh, at that meeting, uh, Enrico, I met him for the first time. He asked me if uh, I would be interested in uh, selling his product in this country. And of course, you know, I'm a graduate of St. John's University. I studied marketing. And I was in the business after graduation of selling Italian products. And immediately, I considered it a challenge. Why was it a challenge? Did you like the olive oil? I haven't even tasted it. I liked the idea because what I was doing was not very satisfying. What was the first product that you brought here to the United States? I've always been in love with the extra virgin olive oil. That was my hero. What year is this? What year are we talking about? The first shipment arrived in the United States in 1980. I have to tell you a funny story. The day that Enrico, I was at his little village and I was introduced to his family, a beautiful family, and we were in his office. We made a deal, we shook our hands, and he said to me, John, in Italian of course, he says, I hope we can sell more than one container a year in the, in the United States. I says, Enrico, I think we will. Today we sell a container a day. And not just in the United States. It all started in the United States. It all started in New York City. And everybody that is in the business now with Enrico throughout the world, they all started after me. They saw the success I was having and they jumped on the bandwagon. But today, the North America, which was my market, the United States and Canada is still the biggest share of the Colavita business, no question. You have a way to explain how many tons of olive oil you sell in America? Well, if you figure a container a day, that's uh, 20 tons a day. So figure it out yourself. Extra virgin olive oil was totally unknown in this country, except if you came from pockets of Italian immigrants in New York City, in Chicago, in Boston. Other than that, nobody used extra virgin olive oil. Now the, hot, and the household penetration was like 6%, meaning that only 6% of, of the households use olive oil maybe once a year. Today we've increased that to 52%. And we're all healthier because of it. We were the first company to introduce in this market uh, 30 years ago the extra virgin. It was difficult and when we started it was from the restaurants. Because in the restaurants it's easy to convince the chef to taste the product, to see in the, with the application what's the difference to use a pure or to use an extra virgin. And then we were lucky too because the Mediterranean diet get publicized from New York Times, from the major newspaper and media in the States. And we were the only extra virgin on the shelf. So we went on the first page of the New York Times. Uh, we started from that and now we are in all supermarket and we have like a close to 9% market share. 
And with EELS, we have decided to improve it and to come up even with a collection, as you can see, uh, of different areas, different countries. How do you recommend using the different oils in salads, cooking? Uh, we have, uh, we come up, actually our marketing department come up with a very good uh, olive oil guide that is basically telling how to use the different oils. So each oil can have a different use. We offer 100% Greek, Spanish, a selection oil from Mediterranean, just to give the consumer the opportunity to try the different oil for the world. But of course, in our art, and our main thing is, is always the Italian oil. Thank you for uh, recognizing the uh, Colavita company, Colavita family, and the Profaci family. This edition of iItaly TV was brought to you by Colavita Extra Virgin Olive Oil and Baci Perugina Chocolate. Say I love you in the Italian way. In the next week episode, journalist, writer and pleasure activist Fred Plotkin tours the latest edition of the New York Summer Fancy Food Show in search of the answer to his question how do Italians eat today, and how dining has changed in Italy over the past decades.